So for this next video, I want to walk you through creating your business plan. Again, this is by no means um, something that you have to follow. I think this is a really helpful structure for putting a business plan together in general. Um, feel free to deviate in ways that you think necessary for your business. And there are lots of other different business plan uh, logos and templates online um, so if this is not something you want to use don't feel pressured but i wanted to walk you through a sample business plan template so you know what to include in your own so here we just have the name of your business which we have already discussed in depth um, your company name again your business name and your company name could potentially be different things uh, depending on if you have a dba a doing business as name uh, what that means more or less is that you have a company, but underneath that company, you could have lots of different several businesses called different things. It's totally okay to do that. If you are going to do that, you're going to want to actually register your DBA with your home state. Um, if it's not something you're interested in, then no need to worry about that at all. You just want to, you know, put the information about your company on that front page. It's helpful to have contact information right here on the front page as well. So if you are sending this out or using your business plan to get funding or to apply for grants or for partnerships or for whatever purposes, uh, the easier it is for someone to find your contact information, the better. So first we'll start with the executive summary. Uh, you want to know or people want to know exactly what it is that your business does in one to three sentences or so. You know, who are you? What is your company? This is your elevator pitch. If someone asks you about the company that you started, you should be able to say, I started this type of company. This is what we do. Um, this is the, these are the problems that we, we, we solve or the needs that we're meeting. Um, it doesn't have to be anything extensive, but you're going to want to make sure that it speaks specifically to what your business does. The next section, your business objectives. What do you hope to achieve? In the first year and in the second year um, you're going to want to make your specific goals um, actual tangible actually tangible you know you don't want to just say make a lot of money you want to speak specifically so if you do want to make a lot of money that's great put a number on it how long is it going to take you one year two year are there a certain number of customers that you hope to acquire um, is there a certain number of products that you are you know trying to sell be really specific. This is also a great place to hold yourself accountable uh, so that you know that you're doing what you said you were going to do. The more specific and the more numbers that you include here in your objectives, the better. Again, this is not a space to talk generally about how you want to change the world. This is your business plan. You want to be specific. You also want to make sure you include your mission statement, which is a brief statement or a paragraph to Describing what your company's mission is. So, you know, I have the Auditory Museum. We're a storytelling company that we help, you know, people and organizations tell their stories more effectively. That is, you know, what we do. But what is our mission? Our mission is to people is to help people connect more authentically, to create more authentic conversations, to encourage vulnerability. This is why we started our company. This is not necessarily, you know, what your company does, but what you're trying to achieve with your business or your company. We also are going to write our values here. You did an awesome job, hopefully, after the last video of sitting down and writing your values. You definitely want to include your values in your business plan. Again, your values are your things that you're eating, sleeping, and living by. I highly recommend that you have at least three. It could be nice to have six or so. Um, just make sure that when you do have these values that you'll be able to filter all of your decisions through those values. What do I mean when I say that? Um, if you are creating a fashion company and you value sustainable fashion, but someone finds that you know you have products on your website that actually aren't sustainably created, that's going to cause a disconnect. People want you to be who you say you are. So you want to make sure you're filtering all of your business decisions, your product your decisions, your marketing decisions through the values that you've chosen. So this would be the place where you include your values. So then we're going to get into the actual, you know, specific services that you are offering. 
this is going to be, you know, first you want to just include, include a few short paragraphs with kind of a high level overview describing the specific services that you're providing. Um, feel free to pause and take notes if you need to. Again, this is actually a template that I didn't want to give you. Uh, I want you to do the work and and write it out yourself. I want you to take these notes. I, I actually believe in active learning. I think if I just gave you the template, you wouldn't watch the video. You probably wouldn't think about this stuff. You wouldn't be writing it out. You would just, you know, blindly fill in what I've written here. And who knows, maybe this isn't even the best business plan for you. I want you to actually go out and look for other templates, see if something else fits better. Uh, but I, I, I do want you to, to consider all of this as you create your own business plan. So your services, you're going to want to write just a high level overview describing the specific services that you're providing. Are you styling people? Are you selling a product? Are you doing hair? It's, it's okay to do multiple things. You could have a beauty business, for example, where you're providing hair and makeup and there's an educational component where people can come to learn about these things on your website and you have a podcast talking about this stuff. It's okay to do all of that, uh, but to the best of your ability, you're gonna want to outline your services here. And as your business continues to grow and evolve, your services might change, that is okay. What you're going to want to include here is what you are, what you think your company is going to do or the services that you are planning to offer now. So this is more of a service description. Um, go more in depth about what your services are and how will they be provided. You know, are if you're doing hair, are you going to people's homes? Are they coming to you? If you're styling people, is it virtual? Is it in person? What does that process look like? This is the opportunity for you to go a little bit more in depth about the types of services that you're offering. Daily operations. What are the day-to-day -day operations and systems that make your store actually operate? You know, who takes care of like the payroll and closing the store? And you know, if you don't have a brick and mortar store, which many of us don't anymore because it costs a lot of money to run something like that, um, your daily operations are probably going to be minimal. You know, maybe checking social media or taking orders or keeping up the website, whatever your daily operations are, editing photos, you're just gonna wanna think through on a day-to-day -day basis um, what needs to happen, what systems need to be in place, and who's going to be doing what. Pricing and profitability. Everyone loves money. So what is the price of every service and how much money will you make? How do you plan to financially sustain, you, sustain your business? So this is the space where you say, look, this is what I'm offering. This is what I'm asking people to pay me. Um, this is how I'm going to make my money. This is how my business is going to be sustained. This is how much I expect to make from each service that I'm offering. You want to be realistic here, okay? If someone sees your business plan and you've never owned a business before and you're new to this and you walk in confidently telling them that you are going to, you know, make a million dollars in the first six months, I'm not saying it's not possible, um, but I'm saying it's not realistic. That's different, right? Possibility and being realistic are not the same thing. By all means, make a million dollars in six months. Prove the world wrong. I would love for you to do that. But you want to be realistic in what you're writing in your business plan because if you are trying to get business loans or whatever, people are not going to take you seriously um, if you are projecting that you can do something that is unlikely to happen. So you really want to think think big here, but think realistically. You know, you actually want to do your homework and think about, you know, your marketing plan. Think about the people in your network, how many people you think you can actually get to buy your service, your product immediately, um, and then make a determination based off of how other small businesses have done in your in your business area. Um, and it's great to do research on that online, just about competing businesses or talk to somebody else in, in the industry if that's an option for you. Um, in, in terms of pricing your items, if you are selling an actual product or pricing a service, you definitely want to make sure that you're competitive, meaning you're not too high and not too low. You don't want to offer something, unless you're offering something luxury and you're selling luxury and that is what your brand is, more power to you, that's awesome. Um, otherwise, you know, if you offer something that costs 10 times more than what everybody else is paying for it, you better have a really, really good reason for why you're offering that much money. Otherwise, no one is going to buy your product. Um, by the same vein, there's actually a lot of psychology that suggests if you ask people to pay too little for your uh, product, they will assume that the product is cheap. So you also don't want to count yourself out. 
Uh, you don't want to automatically make your product so low that people think, well, they don't know what they're worth and if they're offering the product so cheaply, it must be a cheap product. Um, so really do some competitive analysis and see what other people in your area are offering products for before you fill out that section. And that gets us into the market and industry analysis summary. So this is where you want to describe your industry. What are the trends in that industry? Is it predicted to is it predicted to be a growing market or is it predicted to be a shrinking market? Is you know, if you are working in a digital space or something online, presumably it's going to be a growing market. Lots of people are staying home now. We're kind of rethinking how we are uh, interacting with one another. So that's a great that's a great place to be. Um, are you in a shrinking market? I have a friend, for example, who started a dog walking business, but because so many people have been working from home, they're no longer hiring people to walk their dogs the same. That is a shrinking market. It's not to say that you can't find a niche and, and enter a shrinking market, but you want to be realistic about whether or not your market is shrinking or growing. What are the trends in your market? How is the market changing? If you can find, you know, different uh, companies that you can sign up for, email list serves, for example, if you're working um, in media, there are so many different websites that'll send you daily updates about what's happening in media so you can always stay on top of what's happening in your industry. It is very important. This is the space where you show that you are aware of what is happening in your industry and you recognize that it is living and breathing and changing and you are ready to, you know, make sure that you are in the game with everybody else. Market segmentation segmentation is where you want to go in about the types of customers that you are going to um, attract. Who is your customer? What are their purchase purchasing habits? There's lots of data available. I actually read the other day that uh, black people buy more water bottles than any other race. Very fascinating, but if I was trying to make a water company and I my target audience was selling to black people, that would be a great statistic to include. So again, this is going to require some research on your end. It can be really helpful. I had a friend say, if you're trying to sell a product or a service to actually imagine a person, um, an actual real live person that you make up in your head, give them a name. You know, where do they live? What do they do for a living? What are they passionate about? How do they spend your days? Actually cre create a fake customer. That could be a fun thing to include in a business plan as well. Um, and again, this is not going to be your only customer, but it's a great way to actually, you know, help you and others visualize who your customer is. And the more you get to know your customer, the better. Next, we want to talk about your target market segment strategy. How are you planning to reach your customers? How will you communicate to them? So you have this big group of people that you're planning to sell your product to. How are they even going to know that you exist? What is your plan here? Um, I presume that a lot of you are going to use social media, which is very effective. Um, but, you know, think big here. What are the different ways that you can reach people? Are there different types of events? Um, that you can attend or maybe attend online? Are there other ways or do you have connections that you could potentially tap into to reach a particular customer or segment base? You know, think you don't have to do what's been done already, right? This is a brand new business. It's your business. You can actually, you know, think outside the box here. Think of the different ways that you can communicate with or get in touch with um, people who you want to be in touch with. And then your competitors. You want to list at least five competitors. It is, you know, dangerous to always compare yourselves to other people. It's dangerous to compare yourself to other businesses. But when you're doing research, that does not um, hold up. You actually want to compare yourself to your competitors, not to make a determination about which company is better. Um, you just want to be cognizant of what other people are offering and whether or not they're offering something that is, you know, in line with what you're offering, what they potentially are offering that's different than you, what can you offer that your competitors are not offering. Um, it's good to know who your competitors are and you wanna make sure that you are aware of that and you include it in your plan. Next, we wanna get into our marketing strategy. Um, as I mentioned, you know, we, we talk about our competitors. This is a great place for you to actually outline here 
once you've listed your competitors, what will you do better or different? What separates you from the other companies? Again, a part of what separates you might be your actual story, you know, or the contacts you have, or the vast experience you have, or there are any number of things that can that can off that you it yourself um, can be the competitive advantage if you don't feel like there's any other competitive advantage about your product, you could be the competitive advantage and that's fine. Um, but then if there are potential advantages about your potential particular product, that's something you want to include here as well. Your marketing strategy and positioning, you know, what are your strategies to market your business? It goes into, you know, a little bit of crossover with the last question about how you're going to reach your customer base your particular customer base, but this question is more, you know, a general marketing question. Are you going to, you know, use traditional commercials or like over the top OTT marketing, which is basically like, you know, um, if you're going to market on Hulu or Facebook or any of these other platforms, uh, where are you going to place your ads? How are people going to know that you exist generally in the world? That's what you want to include here. Marketing costs. What is it going to cost you? Do decide how much you actually want to spend on your marketing. And again, if you have an incredible brand story, um, an incredible product and service that people are ne need, you can do limited marketing and your business will grow by word of mouth. In the beginning, Chipotle didn't do very much marketing. They really just grew because people loved uh, the product and, you know, continued to tell their friends to go. And it wasn't really until later that they started to utilize marketing in different capacities. Uh, but it is possible to grow your brand without an extensive strategy, but that does not mean you should not have one. You don't want to have to overly rely on marketing. You want to make sure that you have a high quality product or a service, but you do want to think it through and decide upfront how much you're willing to spend on marketing. The more that you can decide upfront, the better. And that breaks us down into our, our financial plan, into projections. Um, and you want to be more specific here about your startup costs. What are all of the costs that it's going to cost you to start a business? If you've decided that you're a person who's going to pay someone for the trademark, that could be, you know, a thousand dollars right there. Um, if you want to pay someone to do your website, that could be another a thousand, two thousand dollars. The more people that you're paying, the more you're going to have to pay uh, for, you know, your startup costs which is why you know I love empowering people to be able to do a lot of this stuff from the self at the beginning. Save your money, honey. Um, who knows when you're gonna need it. So if, if you can learn to do these things or outsource them or find a friend that's willing to, you know, you know, you can trade services. I don't necessarily like asking for free services, but I think trading services is pretty dope. Uh, but you really do wanna think about all of the costs and think about stuff like, you know, just if you're gonna have a Squarespace account, which are you, how much are you willing to pay for your website per month? Um, think about if you're going to sign up for an email account for with Gmail, for example, and you have a business account, that'll cost you money. How, are you willing to pay the business account? All of the things it's going to cost you to actually start your business. If you have an actual product, you're going to want to do a lot of in-depth research here um, and, you know, talk to different vendors and manufacturers, whether, um, you decide to talk to manufacturers and vendors in the states or whether you decide to outsource you're going to want to find out the cost of manufacture i'm going to tell you right now it's going to be very different depending on the number of items that you order generally when you order lots and lots of items each individual item is cheaper um, I have a message there at the top hopefully you guys didn't see that if you did no big deal uh, the message it'll actually be cheaper if you order lots of different products so you know you want to do your homework here it can cost up to you know tens of thousands of dollars if you are ordering or planning to order large masses of product with our like you cards the first time we put in an order we only uh, purchased 500 units our second order was 2,000 units so we were inching up incrementing incrementally uh, with the number of units that we bought because we also didn't want to have so many units and not be able to sell any of them so really think strategically about how much it's going to cost you to do all of this in the break-even analysis at what point in sales will the business operate at a profit so when are you actually going to start making money? 
you know, so you have all of your operating and startup costs, and then you have your projections of what you're going to make. At what point are you going to break even? And then when you when are you going to actually start making money, which is something that you really want to consider. Uh, for a lot of businesses, people are investing lots of their own funds initially, and they don't actually break a profit until much later. So if you are, you know, leaving a nine to five to start your business, you know, that's something you definitely want to think about having some money on the side. Again, if you can make a million dollars in six months, teach the rest of us how to do it uh, for everybody else. It's a process and it's okay. You don't have to make the millions of dollars at the very beginning. Um, learn to enjoy the process, right? Like hopefully you're doing this because you're passionate about it. It's fun. You're learning a new industry. You are challenging yourself in a new way. And really just, you know, take the time to just enjoy that and the money will come. If you're doing what you're supposed to do and you're operating in a space where you feel called to operate, you have to trust that the money will come. Trust yourself during this process. I know for a lot of you, oh, got another message. Hopefully you don't see that. I'm going to have to turn those off. Um, hopefully for a lot of you, you know, this is going to be something that, that ends up being very financially fruitful for you. And I am rooting for all of you. Your homework, obviously is to spend time putting together your business plan, making sure you have everything locked up. Again, if you need to apply for a loan, if you're looking for a space for a lot of different business partnerships and for grants, they're going to want to ask you for a business plan. Even if you decide not to do those things, you are hurting yourself by not having a plan for your business. The business plan is not just for other people, it's for you, it's for your business partners. It provides like a foundation for the business that you are building and you will feel like you are all over the place with your finances, your money, your goals, um, if you don't actually take the time to iron that out at the beginning. So your homework is to sit down and put together your business plan. If you are serious about this business, you will take the time to do it. In the next video, we are going to discuss um, the ins and outs of social media and influencer marketing. So I will see you all shortly.